Now, of course, when I tell people that um, it's time to go on a healthy diet, the first thing they think of is, oh my gosh, all the things I'm going to have to give up. I don't want to give up my treats and my comfort foods, and what am I going to feed my kids instead of all the junk they've been eating? So we're going to start out with cookies today because, um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we got a kid out there that is happy about this. All right. Um, we're going to start out with cookies today because these are great comfort food. They're filling and they're full of nutrition. Nutrition density, I'm going to talk about that a lot. And what nutrition density means is how much nutrition, which is your vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, all of that is your nutrition. How much nutrition is in the food compared to how many calories? So for instance, kale, which is a green leafy vegetable, has tons of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals in it, and not very many calories. So that would be a high nutrition density food. High nutrition density foods are what protect us from chronic illness. They're what reverse chronic illness if you eat enough of them and the right amount and the right kinds of them. And they are what protect us from all the environmental contaminants that are around us like water and air pollution and electromagnetic pollution. And um, so what we want to do with our food is make sure that it's as packed with nutrition as possible, so highly nutrient dense as possible, and not using any um, low nutrient dense foods. So when I'm creating these cookies, every ingredient I'm using is high nutrition density, and, um, but it also has to be delicious because who wants to eat gross cookies, right? All right, so we're gonna start out with some shredded coconut. Now when you're buying your coconut, make sure that it's not sulfured and it's not sweetened. Most shredded coconut is full of sugar, hydrogenated oil, and sulfur as a preservative. So um, make sure, read the label. I get mine at Good Earth in their bulk bins and then it's affordable and you can make sure that it's the right kind. Um, if, if All these recipes are in the recipe book, which is um, after class you can buy the recipe book. And if you buy it today, it's 50% off. Normally I charge $20 for my recipe books. Today it's only $10 if you buy it today. And all of these recipes plus more are in there. I think there's 35 or 40 recipes in the recipe book. So I'm not going to be saying amounts um, just because I can't really remember them. <laughs> They're all in the recipe book. So if you're interested, you can grab that after class. Um, OK, so coconut. And you can make these either chocolate or vanilla. I think you had both samples in there, right? A chocolate and a vanilla one. I'm going to show you with chocolate, but um, to do the vanilla ones, all you do is leave out the chocolate and put in extra almond flour to replace the chocolate powder. And then you can make the yummy vanilla ones. Okay, so this is raw cacao powder. And the difference between cacao, which is C-A-C-A-O, and cocoa powder is cacao is made from the chocolate bean that's been ground up, but it hasn't been processed above 115 degrees. Now, because we're doing raw food, the definition of raw food is food that has not been processed at a high temperature so that it kills off the enzymes and the heat-sensitive vitamins and that kind of stuff. So um, generally, raw food is prepared at between 105 and 115 degrees. Because if you go any higher than that, the enzymes are destroyed. A lot of the um, antioxidants, like vitamin C, is destroyed. And so we want to keep all the nutrients in the food and not kill it by heating it. So, Raw cacao has been processed at below 115 degrees. It, um, regular chocolate powder has been alkalized, treated with high heat, sometimes treated with chemicals. So basically you've got the chocolate flavor but none of the nutrition. If you get raw cacao powder, it's like taking a vitamin supplement in your, um, in your chocolate. It's very high in magnesium, very high in iron, very high in vitamin C. It's got more magnesium than spinach in it. Um, it's great. It's, it's an amazing superfood, meaning you've got a, a vitamin supplement in your chocolate as long as you don't process it at too high of a heat and you get a high quality raw cacao powder. Yes? How do you get your cacao powder? Because like that amount that you use where I buy it, it's mm -hmm. costing like $3. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of expensive. Raw cacao powder is about $20 a pound. Um, so it's expensive, but number one, you eat it in small amounts. So eating tons of chocolate, chocolate's a stimulant, which is good in small amounts, but you're not going to be binging on it, okay? Second of all, um, you can, if you, if you just want the taste of a healthy chocolate treat, but not the, you don't care about if it's raw or nutrient dense, you can go to the Good Earth in their bulk bin section, and they have a, a raw chocolate powder 
that is not, it's not technically raw, but it's also way healthier than if you go get Hershey's, okay? And that's like $5 a pound. So you can, um, you can, it depends on if you're interested in like maximizing your nutrition and the healing power of the chocolate or if you just want a healthy treat. So you can do it anywhere from five to $20 a pound. Um, so you can get it at Good Earth or um, Essential Living Foods has a really good um, raw cacao powder that's, I think that's the top of the line. If I want to get the coolest chocolate, that's where I get it. Yes? You can use carob instead. Yes, and it'll change the flavor a little bit, but you can just substitute it straight across. Or, oh, yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And next, we're just going to put in a little bit of salt. Now, make sure that your salt is not refined. Most table salt has been refined at 1,200 degrees, and it, um, all the minerals have been taken out of it to make it nice and white, and it's been bleached. So you want a salt that's full of minerals and that your body can use to balance your electrolytes. And so that's going to be your colored salt. So like your Celtic gray sea salt or your pink salt. Just make sure it's a little more expensive, but it also contributes to better health instead of ruining your health. Yes? Yep, that's great. That's awesome. Um, the question was, what about Redmond salt? And Redmond salt is a thumbs up. OK, next. Um, we're going to put in a little bit of chopped hazelnuts. These are going to be hazelnut flavored cookies. So we're going to put in some chopped hazelnuts. Um, when you're buying your nuts, make sure your nuts are raw. Most nuts that you buy are toasted and salt, or roasted and salted or fried and salted. Um, you need to make sure that the nuts are raw, meaning they haven't been cooked or salted. And um, you can get those at Good Earth in their bulk bin section, or you can do group orders. Um, I send out emails all the time with group orders where you can buy them in larger quantities and get them for a cheaper price. This right here is almond flour. And where I get almond flour is I make almond milk. We, we're dairy-free at our house, and so we make almond milk, and then when you're done, you squeeze the pulp out of the almond milk so you can have a nice creamy milk. And then what's left over is the fiber from the almonds. And because it's been blended up, it's very smooth and very creamy. So what we do is every time we make almond milk, we just throw the pulp in the freezer in a Ziploc bag, save it up, and then when we have enough, we make cookies, and we just use it as almond flour. You can also grind up almonds, um, like in a food processor, but it just makes a coarser flour. It's not so smooth. Yeah. How long does that last in the freezer for? Months. Yeah, as long as you keep it airtight and in the freezer, it'll last for a while. If you don't freeze it, it lasts maybe less than a week in the refrigerator. And um, I just recommend freezing it because it lasts a lot longer. Yeah, so you can either just put it in any airtight container, whatever, whatever air airtight container you want to do. Okay. All right, next we are going to put, um, this is a little bit of maple syrup and vanilla. And this is hazelnut extract. We're just going to mix all those together. And um, so for sweeteners, you can switch. Can I have a pair of gloves, please? Um, you can switch out the sweeteners for raw local honey, raw agave, or um, maple syrup. Any of those are uh, less refined sweeteners than sugar. Thank you so much. Um, so you can choose any of those you like. And if you like, I use stevia in a lot of my recipes. I'm not doing it today, but um, if you want to use stevia, generally the rule of thumb I use, um, if, you, if you use all stevia, it makes your food a little bit bitter and it has kind of a weird aftertaste to it. So when I use stevia, generally what I do is use half the amount of sweetener. So I'd use half the amount of maple syrup and then a little bit of stevia to amp up the sweetness of it. And that's how you can cut the sweetness or the the carbohydrate sugar back because stevia is a zero calorie sweetener. Um, so you can, you can cut this by half, add a little bit of stevia, and you'll get the same amount of sweetness with less sugary stuff in there. Um, so what I'm just going to do, this is coconut oil. Now coconut oil is a medium chain triglyceride. And what that means is it's a fat that your body processes just like it's a carbohydrate. And um, so usually when you eat fats, your body stores the fats. It processes through the liver, and your body stores the fats for later use. And when you're using coconut oil, your body uses it like a carbohydrate. So it metabolizes it right away, 
And so coconut oil has actually been, been shown to help people lose weight when they switch from regular oils to coconut oil. Now when you're choosing healthy oils, remember how I talked about we have to get rid of all of the, um, we have to get rid of all the refined foods and replace them with whole foods? Well this is one, one thing that we need to replace is our oils. So you need to get rid of all your hydrogenated oil, partially hydrogenated oil, all of your vegetable oils. This is surprising for a lot of people because like canola oil has been marketed as a health food and it's really not. All of your vegetable oils like corn oil, canola oil, sunflower, safflower, all those oils are um, contributing to poor health. So you need to get rid of all those and replace them with either coconut oil, organic, um, if you want to eat a little bit of dairy, some organic butter, or um, olive oil. Just make sure if you're using olive oil, it's extra virgin olive oil. And also make sure that, it, um, that you don't heat it above 120 degrees. Every oil has a smoking point, which means um, once it starts to smoke, the molecules oxidize and they become carcinogenic, which means they're cancer forming. So with olive oil, it's a finishing oil, which means you put it on your food after you're done making it so you're not heating it above 120 degrees. Coconut oil has a way higher smoking point. I believe it's like 400 degrees. So you can get coconut oil a lot, a lot hotter before it starts to oxidize. So all I did was just, um, if you have coconut oil, it melts at 76 degrees. So what I should have done is melted it, <laughs> just put it in a little warm water and dump it in there and then I wouldn't have had to um, stir it up so much. Um, so just liquefy it first. We just forgot before class. And then um, pour that over there. And then you're just going to pour in your sweetener and stir. These cookies are pretty darn easy. You can also do these in the food processor. The reason I didn't was because it's got the nut, the chopped hazelnuts in there and I didn't want them to get too chopped up. So I'm going to stir this by hand. And um, these, it's just going to make a nice cookie dough. Did you guys try your samples yet? What do you think? Hey. Um, could you eat that instead of store-bought cookies? Would your kids eat those if you sent them in their lunch? Okay, what's the difference between these cookies and store-bought cookies? Store-bought cookies are made from white flour, refined flour, hydrogenated oil, sugar, corn syrup, um, lots of preservatives, lots of artificial flavorings. All of those things directly contribute to chronic illness. There's nothing in store-bought cookies that doesn't contribute to chronic illness. What's in here? Raw cacao powder. It's a multivitamin, basically, um, as far as nutrition is concerned. Raw coconuts, raw hazelnuts. Um, we've got some less refined sweeteners in there. So these are, compared to store-bought cookies, they are nutrition-packed, nutrition-dense. And at, at my house, my daughter loves the desserts. And I tell her, you can eat the desserts for breakfast. Because really, compared to most people's breakfast of Eggo waffles or Pop-Tarts or cereal or whatever, these are very, very healthy. And so she loves it. So she can have cheesecake or pie or cookies or whatever she wants, ice cream for breakfast. But it's so nutritionally dense, like she's getting all of her nutrition and none of the junk in her breakfast. So um, it makes it kind of fun. Now, for, um, when, while we're dehydrating, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about dehydrators and help you pick out the dehydrator that's right for you. Orson Gigi carries a couple dehydrators over here. You can take a look at them. Um, my personal favorite is the Excalibur dehydrator, and I'll tell you why. First of all, the fan is in the back of the dehydrator, so it blows all the air forward. Normally in dehydrators, it either comes from the middle, or it comes from the top and you have to rotate the shelves and pay a lot of attention to it. With this, you don't have to rotate the shelves because it's got a high powered fan, blows all the air forward so you never have to rotate the shelves. Um, also, there's a temperature control dial on here and this is great especially for raw foodies because you can set it anywhere from 85 degrees all the way up to 155. So you can set it at the perfect temperature for you. And usually when I make raw foods, I set it about at 110 and that's usually what I do. This also comes in a larger size. So this is a four tray. They come in nine trays, which are like twice as tall, and they have obviously more trays in them. And what I like about these trays, um, the nine tray comes with a bigger tray. I think it's like two inches bigger each way, two inches longer each way. Um, so they've got this main sheet. They've got a, a mesh, 
And then um, we didn't bring them today, but it has what's called a Teflex sheet, which is kind of a sheet like this. And then if you're making something runny, it won't pour through this stuff. So for the cookies, what we're going to do is just take a cookie scoop or a spoon if you don't want to be so fancy with the cookie scoop. Scoop out the cookie dough, put it on the dehydrator tray, ta -da, and fill that up. Stick it in the dehydrator for at 105, 110. Um, depending on if you're doing the vanilla, the chocolate, the vanilla ones get done in about um, a, overnight, and the chocolate ones take about twice that long just because they have less dry ingredients in them. So you just dehydrate them till they're nice and crispy on the outside, soft on the inside, and voila, you've got a delicious, healthy cookie that you're going to love, your kids are going to love. Could you do that? Could you replace, for your 1%, could you replace store-bought cookies with these? Yes? Okay, good. <laughs>